Hey, really glad to be here today. Um, we have had an interesting journey over the last few years. Um, in our assessment, NAVAIR is, and the Army are a little bit ahead of the surface Navy in terms of MOSA. And uh, we're right now looking at, uh, you know, FACE and the uh, basis of it, the principles contained within it uh, for lessons learned and different things uh, to uh, kind of start thinking about what we would do for uh, a MOSA approach for uh, ship systems. And uh, my contact information is there, but uh, just really uh, grateful for the opportunity to come and present to you guys and gals uh, this information that we had. Um, just to introduce us, the uh, Naval Service Warfare Center Dogger Division is one of the warfare centers uh, in the Navy. Uh, we are um, um, the, the big participant in the area of warfare system and combat system design. So if you start hearing, you know, Aegis and different things like that, all of that in some way is touched by us. And uh, we are a research facility. And so our job is to be thought leaders in this space and to help the programs of record uh, ship side understand uh, what's up and coming and, and what's ready to incorporate and, and things like that. Uh, and uh, we decided to present this work to the consortium because we wanted to let you all know that other communities besides uh, air system and air avionics communities are starting to look at the things that you all are doing uh, and uh, there's potential there for synergy in the future. Uh, we also wanted to present it because uh, we were newbies when we began this project in the area of MOSA. Uh, we had only heard of FACE, we didn't even really have the words to express it, and so uh, it'll kind of give you all an idea of what it takes for a group that really doesn't have a lot of exposure to the kinds of things you're working with to get spun up to speed and some of the challenges that folks will encounter uh, as they do so. Uh, so uh, Dahlgren set up this uh, future warfare system architecture project uh, and we investigated FACE. We did a few other things, but really we wanted to look at uh, FACE for MOSA and see if it could be helpful. Uh, the basic uh, premise there is that uh, integrating a sensor or something like that onto an aircraft really isn't that much different than integrating the same onto a ship. Although, uh, Obviously, uh, the things that get integrated on ships tend to be a little bit bigger and a little bit more complex in some cases, uh, you know, than a GPS sensor or something like that. Uh, but we have a tough job over there in warfare system integration. There are a lot of heterogeneous system types that come together. More many organizations are involved. Uh, there are many points that data currently converges across the architecture, and so the integration of all this is pretty hard. Uh, it takes years, quite frankly. Uh, to integrate a lot of systems. And uh, reuse, portability, interoperability is virtually non-existent today. And so folks have started to think, hey, we need to do a better job of this. And so our, our team was one of the ones that was leading the way to say, hey, you know, we really need a, a most approach here in order to improve this situation and start to bend the capability curve higher. Uh, so we looked at FACE, we looked at several standards, quite frankly, and uh, we were really impressed with what we saw at a high level of, of what FACE is doing. Uh, the, the, the advertising brochure was, was pretty compelling, I'll, I'll put it that way. Uh, lots of flexibility, decoupling of systems, portability reuse, uh, especially the computer-aided integration aspects which y'all are pushing towards, uh, really very interesting. And so, uh, the other piece of it is that if we have systems from multiple domains using the same data architecture and or interface governance, there's this idea that we may be able to just unify that interface management across the entire DOD. Uh, and uh, a lot of the past efforts uh, we've seen really didn't have the scalability that were necessary to accomplish that. Uh, but we were hearing some things about FACE uh, that made us think maybe uh, FACE and the data architecture there would start to, to fill that need. And so our basic hypothesis was that FACE is a good start point for Warfare System MOSA. And so we set up an experiment to test that. And uh, it was really just a, a representative integration effort on a small scale uh, where we wanted to assess how things uh, went with, with face integration as a system of systems evolved over time. And so we focused on the area of sensor and track picture integration. Um, the team that was working this were extremely experienced integrators 
in a legacy thought process paradigm. So kind of the old way we've done integration, a very experienced there. And so the team was just full of uh, horror stories about integration done the old way and uh, was very interested in seeing what uh, improvement space might be able to bring. And sensor and track picture integration is an area that has really been plagued by a lot of very difficult challenges in the past. So we kind of picked the worst case uh, you know, area to work on to see if we could get some advancements there. Uh, and so we really wanted to investigate, can we integrate legacy systems that are not originally built to talk to one another without code change? Uh, that is a, an acquisition goal uh, in most integration scenarios that we face in the, in the surface Navy. Uh, usually we will we'll, we'll spend 10 years developing the technology for a, a new weapon or a new sensor and uh, then everybody is like kumbaya or rah rah we just finished and then uh, it's handed over to the integrators and they say okay great it'll just take us another 10 years to, to get that integrated uh, with any of our ship baselines and everybody's like what and uh, can we do better with FACE? And if we could integrate those legacy systems, we believe we could get some, uh, without code change to the systems, we believe that that would get us a, a leg up there. We also wanted to just assess the overall maturity of the FACE approach um, and uh, what the state of the practice is. Uh, and so we set this experiment up as five releases to incrementally add capability. Uh, we basically built one data model per system and then merged them together as needed for the integration. This is very similar to what the previous presenter was saying that they did, uh, I think, if I understood them correctly. And so each UOP kind of had their own uh, conceptual data model. And then we, we merged them, which is which part of that integration process. Uh, so we used uh, Face Tech Standard 2.1, uh, SDM 2136, and later we switched to 2139. We used Sparks Enterprise Architect version 14 with the plugin that the uh, consortium built, as, and uh, also uh, we used the performance test suite to test what we had done. And so we wanted to see how uh, how things shaped up as we uh, used space for something like this. So for release one, we really just wanted to get our feet wet, uh, demonstrate existing systems can be integrated without code change. So uh, we created a simple data model, uh, CDM, LDM, PDM, and uh, views and ports, the whole, whole kit and caboodle for a track display. And uh, then we integrated an existing Face conformant aircraft position sensor um, with our track display. So this was modeling a uh, a uh, aircraft saying, "Here I am, here I am." And we put a dot on the screen, basically. Uh, so we auto-generated the TSS interface code and we manually generated the integration code. So there was still a manual aspect, and most of that was because the tools don't exist yet to actually do a lot of the automatic generation of the integration piece in this. Uh, we really enjoyed the precision that the face data modeling brought. Uh, we really felt that it forced us to build cleaner and more thoroughly documented interfaces. As part of that, of course, we actually had to go back to SMEs who built the systems that we were integrating to say, hey, is this what you really meant by, the, by this piece of data? Because the source documentation we had to rely on was um, not always as thorough as it would need to be to represent a full data model. Uh, it was really hard, though, I'll tell you, to build out the, the logical and platform models and views by hand. Uh, so we're really hoping that tool sets will come in and start to make that a lot easier. Uh, we also found that the EA plugin will allow export of non-conformant models. Uh, we didn't realize this at first, and uh, so we thought we were good and kind of proceeded onward, and then we did the CTS checks uh, a little bit later than we probably should have and found out that it, it wasn't even a valid model. So we had to go back and redo a bunch of stuff uh, several times to get that fixed. Uh, we also found model quality ma matters when merging models. So different teams will apply different thought processes uh, in terms of how we represent the semantics. And if those don't match, uh, it actually becomes very difficult uh, to do the merge um, and still comply with a lot of the constraints that exist. Um, and we also saw that there were cases where we really needed to do cross-observable mediation, which is not uh, something that FACE currently supports. Uh, so duration and calendar time, as well as the name and unique ID, 
Uh, now, a, a lot of this, when we really dug into why this was happening, we, we thought it was because of confusion for of either the definition or the usage of some of these uh, pieces of information that we were dealing with. Uh, one of them got later resolved by an SDM change. We actually submitted a CR against the other one, hoping for a change in the SDM uh, measurement uh, in order to resolve some of that confusion. And so, uh, if you're a tool vendor, you know, listen up, you're going to need support for uh, um, embedded tool checks, uh, conformance checks within your tool. Uh, that, is, that is a huge comp competitive, uh, uh, you know, advantage if your tool can do that. Uh, and uh, we also uh, saw that there was a need for this manual cross uh, data model mapping of some kind, uh, probably. So. I know that FACE is trying to head towards, you know, full automation of integration and things like that, but we really believe that there's always going to be a need for some or some kind of a manual override when different little nuanced situations arise. Uh, and, and we do think that the community should come together, the FACE community should come together and standardize patterns and rules for model construction so that the models end up in the same form or basic shape as uh, as you're building it, because that really makes the integration piece easier. Uh, so for release two, then again, we're modeling kind of system of systems as it expands and grows over time. We wanted to expand both the width and the depth of the integration. So we incorporated a ship mounted battle space sensor. Uh, and then we uh, expanded uh, the UOP definition of what our track is, because now we had a source that could actually provide better information for tracks. Uh, so, um, we wanted to maintain the previous integration and also we did an, in, an SDM swap out manually, uh, and that was interesting, uh, to, to understand, you know, as you're upgrading from SDM versions, what, what's it going to take and, you know, what are the impacts as these things uh, shift and change? The data models will sell shift and change over time. Uh, and uh, we were also incorporating some information from interfaces that we didn't end up integrating because they were uh, interesting challenges uh, in the area of uh, semantics. Uh, so we found some tough interfaces just to represent and play with and ask, hey, can we represent these semantics in the form of a semantic uh, data model? Uh, and so release two was uh, completed. We modified our scope in the end. It was really quite difficult working with the data models in Enterprise Architect. And so we ended up having to downscope uh, a bit just to be able to cut some software at the end of the day. Um, and so um, ended up modifying the, the scope, and we also uh, had to bring in a, a numship navigation sensor later uh, because we realized that there was a, a dependency we didn't realize before. So we actually integrated two new sensors, not just one, uh, which had an impact too. Uh, so we found some interesting things out. Uh, upgrading from 2136 to 2139 was pretty straightforward. It was uh, manually, to do it manually was pretty uh, intensive. Uh, as far as number of mouse clicks, but it, it was it was pretty straightforward. We had a lot of trouble with generalization and specialization relationships as we were merging these models uh, because of that requirement in 2.1, phase 2.1 to replicate associations. Uh, when you replicate the association, just because it's a rule that you have to, uh, you're immediately going to run into a bunch of uniqueness checks. And so we were failing the automated checks uh, because this happened. Uh, I think some of that's been improved in phase 3.0. We haven't really looked at phase 3.0 yet because the state of the practice is phase 2.1 uh, because of the, um, the tool sets, really. Um, and so uh, that's one thing we'd emphasize, and you probably hear me say it multiple times throughout, there's just kind of the state of the art that y'all are working on, uh, but the state of the practice is well behind that because since the modeling formats have changed and the rules and guidance for construction have changed, you got to have time for the tool vendors to, to catch up. Uh, so what you want to do and what you can do today, there's a, a bit of a mismatch in our opinion. Uh, and uh, we, we did find that uh, systems can be integrated um, without code change so long as the producing interface uh, conceptual content and its performance parameters are greater than or equal to that of the consuming interface. Uh, so that was a big win and it makes a whole lot of sense. And uh, we were starting to see some tools emerge throughout this process. Uh, you know, we've been keeping keeping tabs on a couple of tool vendors building tools here, even though we were using EA for this one. Uh, we think that there are some tools that are going to be coming online soon, or perhaps already have, that give us the ability to kind of query for uh, those comparisons, you know, so we can quickly answer, is the data sufficient or not? 
Uh, and that's very useful in uh, integration in general. Right now, you got to compare all these PDFs that are a thousand pages each by hand, you know, and or keep it in your head, and that's just very difficult to do. So doing that in a model-driven fashion, we, we believe, is is very useful. Uh, so we, another thing we saw is that the data model names were ending up in the generated interface code. And so as we refactored our conceptual models and flowed that naming convention through at various points, uh, conceptual, logical, to platform, some of those elements were being picked up. And so you'd end up with a name and that was in the code itself and in the documentation of the code that no longer matched the data model because we had just done a refactor. And so even though the code would still technically work, you end up with this confusion happening between the software engineer uh, that owns the UOP uh, code and the conceptual modeler uh, that kind of owns that integration space because now they're not talking about the same terms. And so we would recommend that we find some way to decouple the data model names from the interface code. Not sure what that would look like, but it would be helpful. And uh, we did see the CTS caught a number of reasonable overlaps as we were beginning to merge these models. Now, it just complained and said, hey, you've got a uniqueness issue here. So the cool part we saw is that that's actually the first data point that you need in order to um, integrate these. Uh, two data models together. Uh, so the fact that CTS can catch those and complain about them is sort of the, the beginning point for tools to be able to help us, uh, you know, manage these merges as they go through. And um, let's see, so next. So we had other releases. We had plan for five. Uh, quite frankly, we said, we're not going to make it. Um, it, it. We had, if we were doing that integration the legacy way, we would have made it through all five releases. But because of the problems that we were encountering with the uh, data modeling, namely it was just so many mouse clicks doing this in EA to get it to the code, we, we didn't think we'd make it. And we also were like, you know, uh, I think we've exercised as much as we can of the software generation from the data model piece doing that extra bit just to have the more capable system isn't going to teach us much, and it was a research project. So we just said, you know what, we're not going to cut code anymore from this. We're going to stay at the conceptual level, and we're going to keep working on assessing can we, uh, can we represent these semantics in, in the form of a data model. Uh, so we had, through that process, we had some questions arise about how to model certain complex semantics. Uh, there's still a debate going on uh, within the FACE community about how that takes place. And so uh, we're interested in seeing how some of those things shake out. It seems like in a few cases we, we sacrificed uh, human readability for machine readability. Uh, we really need both, though, because it's humans that are building the data models and humans that are writing the code that gets cut from uh, or writing code to match the interface for the UOP that gets cut from the data model. So we really need to make sure that we balance human readability with uh, machine readability as we're doing this. Uh, there were certain patterns that we were using that we'd actually uh, heard uh, consortium members uh, using that were failing uniqueness checks. I believe this has been fixed now. There was a CR. I, I can't recall the exact details of it, uh, but I believe this has been, been fixed now. Uh, but uh, it was an interesting data point because we saw that, you know, the, there's just a lot of discussion. This is kind of an emerging art here about how to build and use these data models. Um, converting legacy ICDs to data-centric interfaces is hard, and this goes to what the previous presenter said, that systems are not built to do this uh, today. And so I see I'm running out of time. I'm going to skip through a little bit more of this. Um, basically, need better data modeling guidance uh, kind of throughout. So in a nutshell here, my summary is we really like FACE. It shows a lot of promise. Uh, we recognize now that this is an emerging practice surrounding the, the kind of the state of art, the art here. We really like the reference architecture and mediation approach. We really do believe it brings loose coupling of systems, and we like that it plans ahead for integration later. Uh, semantic data modeling, we do believe that this has the potential to kind of unify that interface management across the DOD, but it's got to get easier to do. Uh, and so we're hoping that tools will come forward uh, that make that easier to do. All the different kinds of things that you heard we had to do as we were, you know, uh, managing this evolution of a small system of systems over time, you're going to have to do it at a much larger scale to continue that activity forward. And so uh, we want to stay involved here. We want to keep watching faces that emerges. So we pursued some partnerships. Partnerships. We we set up a cooperative research and development agreement, for example, with Scale to get their our hands on their tool for free and kind of watch.
watch how things are uh, evolving. Um, that was a special favor they kind of did to us, uh, did for us rather. And uh, we're also interested in efforts to build out some of the key reusable components of these data models. So, uh, you know, we could uh, set up an experiment. If you're a tool vendor or if you're somebody that's uh, interested in expanding this or seeing the expansion to other domains besides air systems, we could set up a little experiment to assess things and at the end of the day, hopefully have some reusable components that we could perhaps uh, stick back in the SD or, or have, because uh, there is a big upfront cost of building the data models. A lot of that has been tackled already in the air domain, uh, but there were a lot of measurements and different things like that that uh, we needed to build that were specific to kind of the language that ships speak. Uh, and uh, so uh, adoption of it at this point is, uh, would be a little bit costly and there'd be some long lead items that we need to work through. So little experiments like that can maybe bite away at that a little bit. Uh, as we kind of look at this moving forward. So that's all I got.